Hey everyone, top three places you can't go, but people went anyways, part two. Have you guys seen it? Because we haven't. All right, let's jump into it. We all like to believe that the whole world is accessible to us if we just had the time or the money or maybe both. But in today's video, I'm gonna shatter that illusion and share with you a top three list of places you can't go no matter how much money or time you might have. And for each of these locations, I'll share with Please you an instance <laughs> of someone going there anyways and what happened to them. Spoiler, it didn't end well. But before we get into today's top three list, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivery story do? format, then you've come to the you right wanna place. You want to go? No, what do I got to do? I do, and I upload three, four, Every time you subscribe, you got to do something crazy. Oh, yeah. If that's of interest to you, then please give the like button a one-way ticket to North Sentinel Island. All right, also, cool. please subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. I got to give him a one-way ticket? All right, Damn. let's get into today's stories. I wouldn't want to go there even if I could. In the early 1990s, a man turns on his camera, flips on his light, and starts filming. As the viewer, all we can tell is that he's in this gray hallway. It's very unclear where he is. It does appear to be something that might be underground because everything seems to be concrete. As he's filming, he oh. begins walking down this narrow corridor where there's nothing on the walls or on the ground or anywhere to give away where he is. And so for the first 40 seconds of him just walking down this kind of meandering hallway, it's very uneventful. Then at some point, he aims his camera at what looks like an arrow that's been spray painted on the wall. Oh. He looks down at the ground and there's another arrow. He starts to follow the arrows and he's filming each Even one. Even though they say gates of hell, it's trap. My dude. Main hallway. And at some point, the arrows bring him to this room, which at first you can't tell what it is. No, but it's just an arrow. But then as the camera focuses, you see that there is this massive pile of human remains, skeletal remains. Oh. The guy filming does not seem alarmed by what he sees. Live In photo. Fact, it seems like he came here knowing he might come across this room full of human remains. After staring at this room for a few moments, he doesn't go in, but instead turns and continues following these arrows and strange markings on the wall and the ground as it brings him farther and farther. Nah, I don't want to go into level one. I want to just keep going. <laughs> to more rooms with more skeletal remains. And at some point, he comes to a full stop and he's looking at one of these rooms and something spooks him. It's unclear what it is because to this point, he's been very nonchalant about this horrible mm. thing he's looking at. It didn't seem to phase him at all, but something did spook him. Because he's standing there, and he turns all the of camera around. Welcome to Cribs. <laughs> now it's clear at this point oh in the video God. that he is alone down here, or at least he <laughs> thinks he's alone down here. But he's running as if someone's chasing him, and okay. he just takes off down this hall. The camera is now dropped to his side. He's not even trying to film what's in front of him. You hear his breathing, and it's very panicked. And at some point, he kind of trips and drops his camera, of and the camera comes he to trips. rest in this puddle looking right up against the wall. So you don't have a clear view of where this guy is or what's going on. And all you hear is his panicked breathing and his rapid footsteps as he continues to run down the hallway and eventually just disappears and it's totally silent. And at some point the camera runs out of batteries and it turns off. Okay. 10 years later, a group of urban explorers would find no this man's camera where he had dropped it 10 years earlier in one of the scariest places on earth. Hundreds of feet below the streets of Paris, France, okay. lies one of yeah. the world's largest I figured, mass graves. You figured it was it's Paris? Yeah. Paris well, every, Paris every, Paris everything Paris that he was describing reminded me of that. It's miles of <laughs> intricate passageways that loop all oh my over God. the city yeah. of Paris, where over oh, six this is a real place? It's a real place. Have been buried. The reason all these people and that's what it looks like? Down there yeah. Is it's like catacombs with like skulls and stuff all over the place. The cemeteries in the city were overflowing. And so the decision was made to move their bodies down underneath the streets of Paris into these tunnels that were built in the 13th oh century God. for mining, but had not been used in hundreds of years. And so they began packing in all these people to the tune of six million bodies before they ultimately stopped doing that. Oh my Starting God. in the late 1800s, the catacombs became sort of a popular tourist destination, but only a tiny section of the catacombs was kind of fucked up. public. Meaning <laughs> That's a there tourist are literally hundreds attraction? of miles yep. of passageways in the catacombs that are totally sealed off to the public. No one goes in there, even though many people believe in these forbidden sections of the catacombs, there are entrances to additional levels of the catacombs, that there could be as much as 400 miles of passageways in the catacombs just waiting to be explored. 
but no one's allowed to go in there. At least not legally. There is an entire community of people that are sneaking into the forbidden section of the catacombs by going through sewer drains, that's and getting on the train tracks, and like, sneaking why? into these little cracks in the side of the walls. I mean, it's incredibly dangerous. It involves wriggling your way into these 13th century tunnels that are unmapped, pitch black, yeah. and no one knows you're there. Not to huh. mention, you're surrounded by literally millions of dead people. Once people started figuring out how to sneak into the forbidden section of the catacombs, oh, that thought just gave me chills. Stories of these urban explorers sneaking in, getting lost, and never coming out again. Which Ooh. is exactly what we think happened to the guy with the camera who yeah. saw the arrows and then ran away. His camera was located miles and miles into one of those forbidden sections. Hmm. It's so crazy. Like, why don't they just explore it? Like, I want to know what's deeper. Well, it probably isn't safe. Yeah, but like. You get, France isn't going to be responsible for people getting way, lost in caves. The best way to prevent people from never going there is to just <laughs> uncover what's there, and then and then they'll be so disappointed they're not going to want to go down there anymore. Or hundreds of people go missing and die. No, well, like obviously you and do get it like dragged into hell. Is that what you want? No, no, that's not what I want. <laughs> what I want is I want them to like go as a party, and then they all can go get dragged to hell. Like. <laughs> Not just letting one person at a time. Oh, you're talking about like a full search party. Whoever yeah. wants to go, like, have now's you ever your seen chance. like ghost hunters and stuff? Yeah. And they got like, we got one camera in one room. Yeah. Like, you're, you're talking like multi million dollar ghost hunts and you can't get more than one camera? Like, give 50 people <laughs> tripods or whatever the hell, go in there, <laughs> record everything, and then like each person has like a little indicator. You can map that shit out in no time. I There's mean, so many volunteers, I'll do it for free! I'd watch the live stream. That'd be awesome! <laughs> Alright, the M Cave. In 2014, Kenny Veach was an avid long-distance hiker that spent lots of his time hiking around the Mojave Desert in search of caves and abandoned mine shafts to go check out. Sometimes he'd bring his girlfriend with him, but most of the time he was on his own and he would stay out for a couple of days at a time. Kenny was constantly on YouTube watching hiking videos and anything to do with the Mojave Desert. And Kenny was a regular commenter on all of those types of videos. In cool. June of 2014, Kenny must have watched this video called Son of an Area 51 Technician because he had left this comment where he was telling the community that had watched this video that he had had a very strange thing happen to him when he was out hiking near Area 51. Ooh. For those oh, that don't great. know what Area 51 is, it's a highly confidential United States Air Force installation that is frequently looped into alien conspiracy theories. Kenny goes on to describe this strange event, and he said he found this cave entrance on the side of this mountain that was shaped like an uppercase M. As Kenny walks up to enter this M-shaped cave, he said his body started to vibrate and it stopped him in his tracks. And he said he didn't know what it was, but as he walked closer and closer, his body just continued to vibrate to the point where he huh. said he just had to turn around and leave. That he knew something was wrong like, with this cave and he couldn't What's happening to me? Yeah. And so he said he turned around and he left. His comment got a lot of traction on this video and a lot of people jumped on and were like, well, I don't really believe you, one, but if that is true, you gotta go back. You gotta go back there and explore it. You gotta document this. Whatever this is, we wanna know what it is. They were basically egging him on <laughs> to go back and check it out. Oh, Kenny man. responded to his we critics and Kenny. said, I'm telling you the truth, I know what I saw. This cave was different. I go out in the desert all the time looking for caves. I play with I rattlesnakes for fun. Right. Okay, that. bro. This <laughs> like different. And that's Believe me, okay? But I play with rattlesnakes. Him on to go back and check it out and to film it, show documentation of this thing. And so finally he agrees. A couple of months later, Kenny goes back out to the Mojave Desert with his camera and he films himself looking for the M cave, but he can't find it. So the video is kind of a bust. <laughs> he still uploads it to YouTube well, and tells everyone that he's gonna go back out again. Guys, I can't find the cave. Mm -hmm. he's he went into the he cave, huh? Again, but he just needs to go out a third time to go look for it. Over the course of the next month, in the comment section of that video, People are encouraging Kenny and saying, go out there, go find it, we're so excited. One commenter was not so encouraging. Their name was Lemmy Kilmeister, and they wrote on his video, do not go to M Cave. If you go in, you won't be able to get out again. Kenny Whoa. wrote back, what do you mean? And Lemmy Kilmeister didn't respond and subsequently vanished from YouTube. Kenny brushes this oh. off, and on November 10th, 2014, he heads back out once again to try to find M Cave. On November 14th, when he had not returned and his girlfriend had not heard from him and couldn't get in touch with him, she called the police. The police launched this massive search for Kenny. 
they knew roughly where he was going to be because he had documented it so aggressively on his YouTube channel. And so they search in that area, and after about a week, they find his cell phone, and it was laying outside of an uh -oh. abandoned. Uh oh, that's not a good sign. Now, immediately, searchers think, well, he must have fallen into this mine shaft that was almost a vertical mine shaft. He must have fallen in there to his death. So they get a camera Yikes. and they feed it down into this mine shaft and there's no one in there. And very clearly, no one had been down this mine shaft in a very long time. Certainly huh. not Kenny. There were no tracks around where his phone was located. So no animal tracks or people tracks. And the phone didn't have blood on it or scratches on it. It was just sitting there with no new information. Beyond Weird. the cell phone, they had nothing else to go on. And eventually the search was terminated. Kenny never turned up. He was just gone after that. While it's pretty what? easy for people to chalk up this whole M cave thing as total nonsense and that they Give me a photo. what happened is Kenny <laughs> went out into the wilderness of the Mojave Desert and ultimately got lost and died. And that's fair. I do want to offer up one thing about his description of being near the cave that first time he saw it. He described okay. his got beamed up, bro. to the point where he couldn't go any further and he had to turn around and leave. The United States military uses these things called access denial systems around their highly classified installations. Anywhere where you cannot risk someone getting in, like a fence isn't good enough, they what? use these machines that fire beams at people that get too close. They're non-lethal, but it's like being thrust inside of a microwave. You feel hot Whoa. and really uncomfortable and you turn around and you get the heck out of there. The Never fact heard that, of that Kenny what? was right near Area 51, a highly confidential area, regardless of alien conspiracies, it's a known. They just knew exactly where it was, and he was like, and he's discovering the strange cave entrance that doesn't look like other cave entrances, and he's walking up to it, describing basically what it feels like to be hit with an access denial system. It makes you wonder: Did he discover some secret entrance to some oh. secret base, or is this a bunch of crap? And he just got lost in the desert and died. We don't know. But what we do know is that his search for M Cave probably ended his life. And that's why you should never go looking for M Cave. Damn. What the frick? So this guy went out into the desert, got lost. Nobody was able to find him. He either got lost or he got beamed up by aliens. Beamed up? but Or he got taken by the military. That's why it's the M Cave. Makes sense. It's military. the military. It's the military. That's where they keep all that military. One hundred percent. Yep. <laughs> they keep all the military. And yeah. then he was walking in. And they were like, "Beam him. Yeah. Can't let him in." <laughs> <laughs> all right. The vortex ring. As the sun began to set on August 18th, 2010, Ben McDaniel, who was 30 years old, walked to the end of the pier, put on all of his diving equipment, and jumped in the water. He slowly descended 115 feet and came to a stop right in front of a very famous underwater sign. The sign very clearly oh, tells Jesus. anybody who sees it, do <laughs> not go any farther unless you are absolutely certain this is the right thing for you to be doing. If you go farther, you're probably going to die like the 300 other people oh my that God. died doing this particular activity. He oh, swam man. right past that sign and went 300 feet to the very famous underwater locked gate. Now, the only people that have keys underwater to this are extremely gate. experienced divers. And even they don't typically go into this area because it's so dangerous. Ben was not one of the very experienced divers that was given a key, but he still desperately wanted to get to the other side of the gate. So he's sitting there yanking on the gate and he's getting himself kind of pushed inside halfway through the gate and he can't quite get it open. And another diver saw him doing this and was actually concerned that Ben was going to get trapped on the gate itself and would just drown on the gate. And so this diver Rough. comes over and uses his key and maybe against his better judgment opened it thinking that that was better than him getting stuck on the gate. Ben turns to look at him, gives him a nod, thank you, and he, on his own, swims into one of, if not the single most dangerous underwater caves in the whole world. It's called Vortex Spring Cave. God, From it sounds dangerous. Cave, this cave extends another 1,600 feet and goes down to a depth of 310 feet. Oh, the majority no. of this section of the cave is mapped, but there are sections that are not fully explored because they're so narrow where you have to literally take off your gear, 
wriggle through a hole. Oh, oh hell no. Nah. It underwater? And so really the no. full extent of this section of the cave is not known. While we don't know exactly what Ben did when he went through that gate and entered into this extremely dangerous cave, we do know that he didn't come out again. And after a couple of days and no one had seen him, they launched this massive search for him and they combed as much as they could of inside of that cave, but there were sections that they were just not prepared to go search. And so he was never recovered. All they ever found were two of Ben's dive bottles. As a total oh. side note, when I oh. was reading about the Vortex Spring Cave, it reminded me of some of the things that we did when I was in the Navy SEAL teams. And one of my least favorite things to do is when we would be swimming in and around ships, we would, we would go under barges. And so a barge has a flat bottom. And sometimes they sit really close to the bottom of the ocean, but there's a little space under there where you can maneuver. And so we would oh. go underneath these barges where there was only a few feet of clearance and it's totally pitch black and you're swimming in just total blackness where you're so claustrophobic. You're basically tight in this little space where you're just hoping that nothing causes this barge to oh sink my on God. you. No. By the time you get out the other side, it's like this huge sense of relief. And so that's why this is number one on my list because for me, the idea of being trapped in a oh, little God, tiny yeah. alcove yeah. inside of an underwater cave where you can't get out, you're running out of air, it's pitch black. I mean, that That's is just the gross. absolute worst thing. I don't want to do that. That's going to do it, guys. Let me know in the comments which of these three places you might actually want to go check out. None of them. I'll respond to <laughs> well, all the actually, commenters. I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm lying. I, I would totally check out the Paris cave. I kind of would too, but I wouldn't go in the restricted areas. Lame. But... <laughs> Yeah, no, forget the wa underwater caves. I've seen, like, cave videos where cave explorers, like, you just see them, and they're just, like, struggling to, like, creep their way through. They've always got that camera ahead of them, though. Yeah, I ain't they've about that. They're always filming it. Like, I'm claustrophobic watching them do that. <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine doing that underwater, trying to fit, Come like, a now. tank through a crevice. What if it breaks? Yeah, well, what was his motivation to go through, like... When he just ask one of these experienced divers who had the key, like, hey, what's it like over there? Nah, he don't, he, I don't know. I think, I think the sign was like, go if you're ready to die. And he was like, I'm ready. Maybe, yeah. And he went in there just to be like, one final exploration. <laughs> Perhaps. Dude was going to die trying to get through the gate. Come on. <laughs> well, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, see you. Bye.